Hello everyone! Today I am going to show you how I make these custom hand-painted foam grips. I figured while I was making this small batch to go up on my Etsy shop, I'd film it and show you how it's done. Let's get started. So the first thing you need is a foam grip. I order mine wholesale and in bulk since I make a bunch of these to sell, but I know you can buy single ones that aren't too expensive. Next, I take this Prismacolor Very Thin colored pencil and sketch out a rough design. I use this brand of colored pencil because it tends to show up the best, doesn't smear like regular graphite, and doesn't affect the paint adhering to the surface like a waxier colored pencil would. The paint I use for my foam grips is Windsor & Newton acrylic paint. You can use pretty much any brand of acrylic paint for this, and even most craft paints will work, but since these are essentially mini portraits, I wanted to use the same paint that I use for my larger portraits. This is really nice paint and I love working with it because the colors come out so vibrant. Really the only issue that I have with this brand is that the yellow paint is far more transparent than the other colors. If you use that color by itself, you have to build up a lot of layers to get it to complete opacity. And if you add yellow to any of the other colors, it makes them more transparent as well. But that being said, I can always find a way to work around it. When I'm working on the black phone grips that you will see later, I sometimes lay down a layer of white before I go in on top with yellow so that I don't have to build up as many layers to get the full opacity. So the first parrot that I am painting is an Eclectus parrot. And fun fact, in the wild the green ones with orange beaks are always male and the red and blue ones with the black beaks are always female. Though there have been multiple color mutations that have been bred into them in captivity like blue, yellow, and orange and I'm not even sure what else. These are adorable birds but they have a slightly odd beak to head ratio and placement so if you notice I paint over the top of the head quite a lot to get it right and I'm still not sure if I did. Their eyes don't sit in line where the top and the bottom beak meet like many other parrots and their feather pattern is incredibly smooth so it is hard to see any little indentations where or anything that I can use as a guideline to where to place the eyes. So I started this video with the hardest one. <laughs> Typical. But it still looks pretty cute, right? So here we have the rest of the phone grips that I am going to make today. I actually started these the day before filming because I hadn't decided to make this a video yet. So oops, you don't get to see the sketching and background painting parts just the birdie painting parts, which that's why you're here, right? The next up are these two umbrella cockatoos. To save time and effort and space on my palette from mixing too many colors, I try to work with one color group at a time, so working on both of these cockatoos at once made more sense than finishing one at a time. And acrylic paint dries pretty fast, so by the time I had finished one, I would have to mix up all the same colors again for the second one. That and working on two or three at a time gives me something to do while I wait for a layer to dry. Because you really want to make sure that the layers are dry before you go back in on top. Since this is plastic, the acrylic paint will not stick to it quite as well as if it were a primed canvas. Because of the somewhat rough surface, the paint does go on really well and really smooth, but because it is not porous like gesso, there is nothing for the moisture to seep into, so it just has to sit there on the top until the moisture evaporates. But this is acrylic paint, so like I said, it dries pretty fast. You won't have to wait too long. I recommend distracting yourself with more YouTube tutorials on my channel, or browsing my Etsy shop. Shameless plug here. Psst, by the way, I have an Etsy shop now. You can find me by clicking the link below. I also have a link on my Facebook page, and I link any new items I add to my shop on my Instagram. But you can also type in Hannah Staten Art, one word, no spaces, and you will find my shop. I have it really small at the moment, but I do have plans of growing, and whenever I make a project here on a YouTube video that I plan to sell, I will provide a link to my shop so that you can find it. But I have a few items already listed, some original paintings, and even more bird phone grips. And a brand new sticker design that I have not even shared on Instagram yet. I have technically had an Etsy shop for a year, but I had nothing in my shop because I was intimidated by all the information needed to create a listing and figuring out shipping and all that fun stuff. 
But I feel much more confident now since I've been shipping artwork to customers for quite a while. And a few months ago, I shipped a huge three foot by four foot painting across country and it arrived safely. So that definitely boosted my shipping confidence and I feel less intimidated shipping smaller pieces. But where was I? Oh yeah, the cockatoos. I think the one with his crest down is my absolute favorite that I have painted in this batch. He is just so cute. Okay, so the last three birds I'm going to be painting are a Quaker, an Indian ringneck, and a budgie. And this budgie actually happens to be my budgie, Ume. So I'm going to be keeping this one and putting it on my phone, while the rest will be joining the other bird phone grips in my Etsy shop. So a couple of tips on painting these mini portraits. I use round tip brushes because you can get a really fine tip and they hold a lot of paint so you don't have to dip your brush in as often. Forgive the rough state of these brushes, they have lived a hard life. I have the habit of using the same brush till it falls apart. I mainly use the larger of the two and I only use the smaller one for details. These are my favorite brushes to use with acrylic squash and watercolor. I like to keep the gouache and watercolor brushes separate from my acrylic brushes though because acrylic paint is more drying and will fray your brushes faster than watercolor or gouache will. And the process I use to make these look as realistic as possible is that on the first layer I lay down a flat color, just block in all the shapes. On the second layer I add a gradient. This is to show where the light source is coming from as well as to show any contours that would be in shadow. And from there, provided I haven't had to build any extra layers to get full opacity, I will then go in with the details. Details are usually highlights and shadows as well as any textural effects that I need to add. Of course I include the eyes at the end as a detail, but if you aren't sure where to place the eyes, you might want to add them earlier so that you can kind of work them with the rest of the design. I find that this process gives me the most realistic look, especially when I am painting small. All right, now that we have finished all of our phone grips, how do we finish them off? We don't want to just leave them as is because the paint will eventually scratch off, so we need to coat it with something durable and scratch resistant. The best thing for this is epoxy resin. I wait several hours to overnight to make sure that the phone grips are fully dry before I apply the epoxy. And you want these to be on as even a surface as possible, so I pop the plastic part off of the top. Don't worry, it's designed to do this, it will not hurt it. And I pop them onto the top of these little plastic cups that happen to be the perfect size. Now that the surface is level, we mix our resin. I have lots of videos on my channel talking about resin if you'd like to check those out. Basically, the type of epoxy resin that I am using requires equal parts of resin and hardener to be mixed thoroughly. Once everything is mixed, I put small amounts onto the surface of each foam grip. You don't want to put too much, and if it isn't enough, you can always add more later. And then, oops, I forgot to add my glitter. I add a tiny bit of iridescent glitter. This is entirely optional, you don't have to do this, but I really like the effect it gives. Once you have a few drops of resin on your foam grips, take the stir stick and spread it out evenly. I like to spin mine and pull the resin to the edge like I'm icing a cake. Make sure it doesn't drip over the sides. This is the worst thing that can happen and you want to make sure that you wipe it away immediately if it does. If you get any spill over and it does cure, there is a stage around the eight to nine hour mark where the resin is cured enough to touch but still slightly soft so you can cut it away with an X-Acto knife or even peel it off with your fingers. I let these cure overnight or for nine hours before reassembling. Then I leave them for an extra day or two just to make sure that the resin is fully cured and hardened before I ship them to customers. So there we have it. That's how I make hand painted mini portrait phone grips. If you want to try this yourself, I will link everything I use in this video in the description below. I also have links to my other social media and my Etsy shop where you can purchase one of these or another one of my phone grip designs. I've also got a custom pet portrait option, so if you have a furry, feathered, or scaly friend that you would like to get painted on a phone grip, you can select that as well. 
Oh, and if you do try this yourself, tag me on Instagram because I really would love to see what you create. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, have a great day. Bye.